is. You must understand the laws that govern these agencies and these individuals and know how to apply. I, I, I don't want to counter what you're saying. Yeah. I want to I want to add a caveat. That's we do cool, need though. to know the rules. You we need do to need to rules. be acquainted with the laws. We do need to know what we how we should behave when we're confronted by the police. <clears throat> But there's a caveat that I want us to be clear with here. Because what I'm trying to explain in this particular discussion is that black folks encounter the police when they are doing nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. And that often, as I'm going to show you in a moment, what happens, the violent reaction also occurs when we are doing nothing. And so I don't want us to begin to believe that almost like magic, there's a word that we know we need to know how to say to stop naked white supremacy. Because the reality is those same laws were created by the white supremacists. And if we learn a, a magic word, I'm not saying there is one, but if we learn a magic word, they're gonna change, change the, the word. word. Yeah, exactly. So I want you to understand that while we need to understand the law, while we need to understand how to behave, we also have to understand how we are viewed by a system. We also have to understand that the, the real solution is to create systems and institutions that actually respond to us. Because the systems that have not been created to respond to us are in fact doing what they were created for. They were created to subjugate black people. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so here's a good example. There's no way that you can not think about, in the same state as these children were being accosted, the, the life of, of Tamir Rice, a 12-year-old who was doing nothing more than playing with the toy gun. And when the police arrived, they literally opened fire on him in less than two seconds. There was no freeze. There was no, well, I'm in a car. Maybe I should take cover behind the car and find out more about the situation. They, the, the officer began shooting before the car came to a, a full halt. First of all, understand that this is a 12-year-old. So even if there was something he should have said, the very fact that we're talking about a child figuring out what to say means that we are responding to a nakedly racist, violent system. Because no 12-year-old should understand what to say. That's the situation we're in. And I know when I and I know that we've been trying. When I was a young boy, I remember the day that a police officer visited my classroom. And I had no issue with it. I thought he was friendly. He, you know, now in hindsight I understand something a little different mm -hmm. because being friendly what he did to this completely black classroom is he had us play with his handcuffs. So what he would do was he would put us in the handcuffs. Mm -hmm. Can you get out? No, you can't get out. They're handcuffs. That's what he did. That's how he thought he was going to interact with these black children. And when I went home and told my parents, my father has a better poker face than my mother. <laughs> I remember my father being silent and kind of staring at me like, and I remember thinking, he didn't say, I had a lot of fun. Why, why is he responding that way? My mother said, oh, hell no. <laughs> and that's what I said, wait, what's going on here? <laughs> And so she, she calmed down and asked me to talk about what, what I learned in class. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I said was, I was told that if I'm lost or something wrong, I should go to the police. And she said, no! When you are lost or something is wrong, find a mother. She had developed a strategy to save her child who was not more than seven years old. Because she recognized that, she, that the, the naked racist system could confront her child, her young boy child. Mm -hmm. And so there really is no magic word. I'm not saying we shouldn't know the law. That's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying knowledge of the law does not prevent a 12-year-old a, a from being shot within two seconds of his encounter with the police. In mm -hmm. fact, in some ways, I don't even know if you can call what happened an encounter with the police. It's not. I don't even know if he understood what happened upon his death. This is what is occurring. By the way, the officer that shot him, he actually was not uh, criminally prosecuted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, just, they realized that he had some um, things in his uh, application for the force that were actually incorrect, that were literally fabrications, that were lies, so that he was fired. Mm -hmm. And then when he was fired, we heard this week that he had successfully applied to another police force. Mm -hmm. 
when the media made it uh, made us aware of the fact that he was going to be hired by a smaller police force than the Cleveland police force, he re we withdrew his application. Mm. So this is what is happening. This is what is happening. We see the, the continued criminalization of black folks. Now, and so I want to say, yes, before we move on, that first, that, that woman, uh, Which that, woman? The one that traumatized the boy, had yes. a client. Did you see the new thing about her? It, what? What, well, tell she us what was, you're saying. Yeah. Well, it was yesterday. After, I, I don't know how long how long it took she, her to she see apologized. the... She got on television she and apologized. apologized. Yeah. On television, she said, I don't know who the black boy was, African-American, well, I don't know the word. Mm -hmm. She says, but I would like to apologize for doing that. And this was what the grocery store said? Yeah. Yeah. Right now, 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 what, now, my question is, <laughs> do we forgive? No. No. Well, no. I mean, that's listen, no I think that we need to be clear. I just, that I just, I just asked. I'm that's not, that's not what we're, we're, we're not, not talking about any anyone being different. Different. Because the reality <laughs> is, even if you look at what she said, the only reason why she said it is because she was embarrassed. She's embarrassed. That's what happened. That. She was she embarrassed. Seen, she Not seen the that. video. Sure. And she, and she seen. She got a lot of backlash. But no, she but no hold on. Let's even add that. Not only was she embarrassed, what, what they expect to happen is they expect us to be belligerent in our response, which thus now they use as a justification for whatever there goes you down. Go. That's and when what we weren't belligerent and actually upheld ourselves as a civilized people that they claim themselves to be, you make yourself look like an a-hole. The same A that she was trying to claim got touched that she don't have. So as a mm. result, she had no other way to redeem herself but to apologize. And then to say this was not about race. And, and That's what she did. So yeah. she was but trying to she actually... Said a little black boy touched her. Yes. yes. So yes. she tried to rehabilitate yes. her image. That's yes. all she, she was did, doing. Did that that was and it. so we, oh, we and need the next to thing understand... She said, oh, they, and I've been getting death threats. Oh. <laughs> but I, but I, before I even read that, oh, wait, where's the slide? <laughs> yeah. My into, slide is missing. Into, and she was feeling oh, some sort of way because it what was a black dude, that grown man, that wasn't in her face. Because I've seen that happen on the train before where like some Russian woman was old, like wild out on this elder black dude on the train who was had a cane. And you know, he's like, oh, I have, she said I have to get up so this crackhead can sit down. And then she goes into like five different conversations and then starts talking about black men want this, <coughs> pumping her. Just like how the woman was pumping her I, pelvis I, I, in the video, the lady was doing that on the train. And this was a couple years ago when I, I was in college. I was I, like, I wanna, hmm. I want to be clear that so one of the things, yeah, one of the things I want to also say, I, the, my slide, there's a slide missing, but I want to be clear that something else that has clearly happened is that there was a recent report that came out that was described in St. Louis Magazine that proves that interactions with the police are much more dangerous when it, when it affects um, African American yeah. people. Well, it was it. proven that for unarmed individuals that come into contact with the police, African Americans are seven times more likely to have deadly force used against them. Mm -hmm. And so when someone calls the police, and there's some folks that, that sort of joke about the fact that this is happening, I think that instead of crying, some people laugh, and I get that. But the reality is that we should also understand that when the police are called, there is a good chance that excessive force will be used. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is what we are seeing. That is what we should be concerned about. So what does the Sebaeit literature tell us we should be doing? Because let's be really clear. You are the practitioner of Maad, are you not? Mm -hmm. yes. If you hear the call of ancient Kemet, if you hear the call of ancient Africa, you are actually supposed to be doing something. You should be looking at this in a certain way. That's what we have to do. So what does Patahotep say about Ma'at? He says, Ma'at is good and his worth is lasting. It has not been disturbed since the day of its creator. Whereas he who transgresses its ordinances is punished. It lies as a path in front of even him who knows nothing. Wrongdoing has never yet brought its venture to port. It is true that evil may gain wealth, but the strength of truth is that it lasts. A man can say, it was the property of my father. I think this is interesting because in some ways, Patahotep sounds a lot like Martin Luther King. 
Didn't Martin Luther King say the ark? Come on. You don't know the quote? Mm -hmm. no. American what? Dream. Yeah, give us a little bit more. <laughs> Just a little bit more. And I'll tell you. He said, the arc of justice is long, but it bends toward truth. So what he was actually saying is that while it may seem that those who do evil may actually benefit, we see one man that has continually done evil who is now actually inhabiting the White House. It seems sometimes that people who do isfet are rewarded. Mm -hmm. But what Patahul Tep is saying, as he says, it is true that evil may gain wealth, but it is true that evil, that, but the strength of truth is that it lasts, is that he is saying that you must stay the course of Ma'at. And it is that which will free us. The truth will set you free. That is what he is saying thousands of years before those words were actually uttered or written in the Christian Bible. He's saying that even though it seems incorrect sometimes in what we experience, that we must remain an element of justice. So if you are an element of justice, practitioner of Ma'at, is it enough that you simply shake your head while you're watching CNN? Mm -hmm. Is it enough that you are disturbed when you read the New York Times, the New York Post? If you are, in fact, a practitioner of Ma'at, you should be an element of justice. Mm -hmm. You have heard me say that, that I lovingly critique comedic shrines. And that, in fact, often what comedic shrines do is that they are insular. That often what comedic shrines do is they do what they do amongst themselves, but you would never know where a comedic shrine was if you weren't told. Mm -hmm. That you would not actually have any interaction with the comedic shrine unless you've been invited. That is what comedic shrines have been over the course of these last two decades, unfortunately. They have sat and, and worked for the edification of its members, but where is our presence outside? Where are the marches led by comedic shrines against injustice, even though we are the practitioners of justice? Mm -hmm. Where are we? Does it only make sense that you should see the Baptist minister leading the rally against someone who's been killed? And you sit at home with your feather on your head, shaking your head at CNN? Are you really a practitioner of Ma'at if you're not getting involved with Ma'at, mm -hmm. with justice. So is in Ma'at law. Ma'at is just, yeah, one of the principles of Ma'at is justice. Mm -hmm. And law. And law, but I'm focusing on justice right now. <laughs> but how can you get, see, um, what I'm saying is that we understood that back, that they, 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 it was part of that scale. It was part of the scale. And why, even though we are here, in this time, and, and, and we are from the Temple of I believe that if you bring forth truth, because their laws, a lot of their laws are based off of what they learned from us. Mm -hmm. And if you understand the actual law of any country, I don't mean just the United States, of any country, it only deals, the true law will only deal with the man and the woman. <clears throat> that is written in law. And as, as we as my art uh, practitioners from this temple, this is what we have to bring out. This is what I bring out on my social. Barbara who will be on me all the time because that's what I put out on my page. How does, how does what you're saying impact well, naked, but, racist, well, police well, violence? Well, that's well, that's well, what well, we're talking well, about well, today. Yes. <laughs> you, you, it's there. You're not going to... It's there. It's, it's, it's something that is there. How do we protect ourselves and our community it's understanding the armor that you wear. I wear. I, I just don't wear ankh and I don't wear this this thing of my yacht. I bring it forth in truth every day, and even in speaking, in my actions, in my words. So this is how we do this in our community because a lot of people didn't know this. I'm sharing stuff, and they said I didn't know this. I said, well, the first armor is you walk around with this mini computer on your your pocket. Google, start learning. It's just not just taking in these words. You have to do research and understand. You share with your brother. You share with your sister. You share with your mother. You share with Once this. Once again, I'm not trying to counter what you're saying. The focus on this is a little bit different today. 
The focus is not simply knowing the law. The focus is taking action. That is That's the what, action you're here, taking. No, the, the action cannot be reading the law. Because that will lead us, wait, let me finish. The act, that will lead us once again to becoming insular, insular. to reading books. No. And reading books is wonderful, but the reality is people are being murdered in the streets. And where is Ma'at? Where are the practitioners of the comedic tradition? Do you think marching is going to do it? Marching well, has done a lot more than simply uh, reading. No, no, I'm, 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 saying, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you. they created the law doesn't mean they follow their own No, laws. what I'm and saying is marching is this. You know one of the, the greatest tr trickeries that I found out that has hurt us? When... When a police officer is not, when he's, uh, okay, he's not guilty, they let him go, they say, okay, we, we're going to forgive him. You know what they turn around to us and tell us to do? Uh, go, uh, and the ministers come and tell you, go file a civil rights uh, um, claim. They violated your civil rights. Civil rights class action. Right. There you go. Did you know that that's a that's a far, uh, that's the most detrimental harm the, that the, has been hurt. Uh, the thing me, is this: that's not what that the wait, wait, wait. The shot, that is not, not the changing. focus of today. Yeah. I am not disagreeing with you. I am saying the focus today is a di a slightly different thing. Mm -hmm. This is what I am saying. I am saying that there have been practitioners of the comedic tradition for at least the last fifty years in the United States. And during that time, Brother Jabari has been part of many movements for justice. This is not something that most people know. But my, my background is in militancy and activism. That is what I've always done. And when I'm there, I don't see us. That is what I'm saying. And if we are the practitioners of Ma'at, the practitioners of justice, we should be in the forefront. We have to do something. I'm not saying that, not, that knowing the law is not important. That's not what I'm saying. Of course we should know the law. But I am saying we need to do more than sit in these wonderful rooms and discuss the, the nature of the universe. That is what I'm saying. It's time for us to get involved. A call to action. Yes. Right. That is what I'm saying. So the law, well, we must actually. know the law. That's not... That's not the focus of this. The focus is the fact that what we have been primarily doing is operating and dealing with only ourselves. And that we must do more. Make our presence much more public. Yes, in the community, yes. resolving these issues. Mm -hmm. And listen, there are those people who say that some of the things that we have done have not worked. And I want to caution us about that. Because just a few decades ago, we would have been in chains. Mm -hmm. There are some things that we did that did work. Mm -hmm. They did work. I mean, this is almost like we're in the midst of a battle, and your side is winning, and you say, you know what? We haven't won yet. Let's just put down our arms and go find something else to do. <laughs> we are still in the midst of the battle. And believe it or not, we have been winning. But if you are not clear on what has occurred over the last 200, 300, 400, 500 years, and you don't look at history in its longer sense, mm -hmm. then you can be misled about what has worked and what has not worked. Mm -hmm. I am not saying the only thing we must do is march. I would never say that. I'm also not saying the only thing we must do mm -hmm. is educate us on the law, because I would not say that either. Mm -hmm. What I am saying is that we must be more involved in our community and in movements for justice. In fact, we should be at the forefront of them. That's what I'm saying. Right. And so I want to talk to you about this five-step proposal that I am suggesting. The first thing we need to do is we need to balance the truth of the criminal, the true, um, the truth of the criminal justice focus on people of African descent with finding ways for kids to be kids. So yes, we have to talk about the fact that in many communities, the police do damage to black folk. And we have to talk to our children about it early enough so that they can um, behave in a way that perhaps will not um, allow them to be under the gaze of the criminal justice system. That's what my mother was saying to me when she said, when you're lost or you're in trouble, don't go find a police officer, find another mother. That's what she was saying. 
But in the same, at the same time, we have to try to make sure that we find ways for our kids to still enjoy those things that kids need to enjoy. Mm -hmm. That child who was standing there in complete confusion, trying to make sense of a world that does not make sense, had realized that he could not be a child. That, that he could not do the things that other children do. That's what he realized. We have to try to rescue his ability to be a child. That's what we have to do. Why can't a 12-year-old play with a toy gun? Now, we can say all the things we want about pacifism, all the things we want about whether we should be allowing them to have the implements of death. That's, a, that's an argument for another day. But I am saying that there are millions of children who have played with toy guns. Why can't a little black child do it? Mm -hmm. We have to rescue their ability to be children. That's what we have to do. And that's why the shrine, of, the shrine of Ma'at must find ways. I have been saying this, and we're going to work even more diligently on this. We must find ways that this is a space that is endearing, that is loving, and that is enjoyable for children. The comedic legacy must not simply be so cerebral. We have to do some things so that kids can be involved. When you come into comedic shrines, you don't see many children. That's a challenge. We have to do more. Number two, I'm going to go through these quickly, okay, and then we can have a, a, a conversation. We have to be sure to develop emotional, spiritual, and psychological self-care plans because dealing with this system causes dynamic injury mm -hmm. to us. You wonder why you walk outside and you see people acting like they've lost their minds. There is a strain that is placed upon us mm -hmm. at all moments when a child is just Having a, 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 a lawn care business, how many children have actually mowed lawns for money, had a paper route for money, done those simple things that children do when they're learning how to operate in the world? And when something like this says, you cannot do this, it causes damage. And that damage we carry with us from that day to now. Mm -hmm. It is heavy. I remember being a college student and recognizing that while the other students could worry about the exam or worry about whether they were getting the notes right in class, I had to worry about whether if I opened my mouth, I insulted my entire race, whether if I didn't do well or said something that wasn't great, that they would look at me less than human, and then I had to worry about whether I'd get kicked out when no other black people, almost no other black people were in the class. or in the... It was heavy. It was like running a race with weights on my back. We have to develop plans that help us heal emotionally and psychologically. This is the reason why we see so many people in our community that seem to have lost their minds. There is a weight to racism, a psychological weight. And I'm not forgetting that we are supposed to be in the middle, not in the middle, but towards the end of our 90-day meditation challenge. What are you doing to heal? And I know that this is not the kind of conversation that men usually have with men. But what are you doing to heal? Are you meditating? Are you in your altar work? What do you do to deal with the stress that you are under? Our sisters think about these things more than men do. I know you do, queens. I know you do. How many of us had mothers that when they had a hard day, they would go take a nice bath with some candles and stuff? <laughs> and our, our mothers did that. What did your father do? <laughs> Drink a beer? What did he do? Watch TV. Watch Not a damn thing. <laughs> Not a damn thing. We need to develop systems to help us deal with the weight of this system. Number three, we have to become involved in movements for justice if you are a vessel of Ma'at. We have to be there. We have to be. Anika and I go to Black Lives Matter rallies. Am I saying that Black Lives Matter is perfect? No. But what am I waiting for? A perfect vessel to be created so I can become involved? Is that what is the practice of Ma'at? We become involved to make it perfect. We have to become involved. Number four, a corrective history of Africans is critical. Because when we tell our children who they really are, they'll be able to counter what is being said about them. Mm -hmm. It is critical. 
And number five, comedic shrines must be public spaces uh, for a dialogue of something more than just spirituality. That's true. Mm. We must talk about spirituality. We must talk about how we can connect ourselves to our ancestors and to the Neteru. Of course we should have those conversations, but we must talk about more than that. We have to talk about the issues that affect our community. There's a reason why Nick and I are in the middle of Harlem. Trust me, we have friends, and now that we're getting older, we have friends that are doing quite well in other places that talk about their wonderful trips to <laughs> Europe. <laughs> and they sit with us and they say, you know, we just got back from Paris. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> you know how wonderful it was? I took a picture of a croissant that they made the big, listen man, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you got that degree that people died and bled for mm -hmm. so that you could now say, this is for me so I could make the most money have the, the, the whitest possible wife or husband and go off and, and live someplace else outside of our community? We have friends, if I can still call them that, that did that. Those are my, those are my friends. Those are my friends. Those are my friends. That's, we've had, we have those friends now. The friends that we turn on TV and they're the commentators on television. That, that, those are people that we, that, we, that we met each other with. The friends that you open up um, the newspaper and there they are, they've gotten a big promotion. We have a good friend that might actually lead the NBA. I'm talking about a dude that I used to sit down and talk politics with. He's still a, a solid brother, but what am I saying? I'm saying that we have to be involved in the affairs of our community. That's why Anik and I decided to be here in Harlem when we could have done what some of our friends did and to see how we can live amongst white folks and do the things they do like we arrived. That's not why people struggled. That's not why we they struggled. They struggled so we could do something. So then now, Anika and I can't say, okay, we live in the hood, but we still don't want to be of the hood. We're gonna just close our door and not do nothing, and we still gonna go to Bergdorf Goodman and, and you know, mm -hmm. drive around in our fancy cars. Okay, call that and here. pretend that they're not there. Think they do a we King. have to be involved. Do Martin Luther King? What? Yeah, yeah, because they, what they, what is integration? They think they have integrated into. Oh, come on! Don't don't malign that ancestor. No, no, that is a, not what he meant. No, but that's what they think. He's yeah, they, they think that that's what that's, that's what, what the civil rights movement. Okay, okay, good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad we clarified that. You <laughs> that's, that we clarified that. Yeah, yeah, that, that they think that that is the civil rights movement. Yes. Right. That it means and that they yes, should that now the they should benefit on their own. This is Those are the that that's that's what it's like. Have a Starbucks. Yeah, <laughs> I have. I had a good friend that said I can't live in Harlem. Harlem, it doesn't have our Dean and Deluca. A what? <laughs> I said, chicken, Deluca. you crazy? Yeah. Good that's what I said to her. Good I can't live in Harlem. I'll visit. I have another good friend that said, you know, I don't know if I can live so far away from Whole Foods. I said, first of all, you from the south side of Chicago. Hmm. Oh. Second of all, Whole Foods is on 125th Street. <laughs> Get your mind right, African. But they can't. We have to be involved. <laughs> they can't. Don't say nothing else. I know you about to talk about that person. Stop it. He <laughs> me. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. Because she might be watching. I, you need to understand yeah. that we, she knows we're talking about her, but we're not going to just lay out all her stuff. What I'm saying is that we have to be involved. The comedic tradition tends to attract the best and the brightest of us. I know that because I know each of you. Those people that, are, that have studied more. Those people who have done more work. But we can't just close the doors and look at beautiful silver onks. We have to do more. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Come to you, do you?